morning. We welcome you all to worship this morning. Thank you for being here. A couple business items to get to. Um, there is an upcoming congressional meeting on the 30th of January, immediately after worship, and it is important that all church members attend. Um, we need committee chairs to please submit their annual reports to the church office this coming week um, so that they can have it, the annual report published and in church by the 23rd. Um, the mitten tree will be taken down this week, so any last minute donations, please drop them off by Tuesday. Um, there is also going to be a blood drive here on Tuesday from 11 to 6. Uh, it had to be moved here unexpectedly, so if anyone's able to do that, that would be great because they're a little worried about um, how many people are going to show up because they haven't had time to, to advertise. Um, after service today, we're going to be degreening the church, so if anyone can stay and help, that would be great as well. And then lastly, if you could keep the family of Joan Whitman um, in your thoughts and prayers. She passed away this week. Um, we don't have any information on service yet, but maybe sometime in the spring. Uh, now let us gather to hear and respond to the call of worship. The word became flesh and lived among us. As we, and we have, have seen, seen his, his glory. glory. The true light that enlightens everyone has come into the world. Glory, Glory to, to God, God who has blessed us in Christ. Christ. Glory, Glory to, to God, God forever. forever. Please stand for our opening hymn. Trusting in God's love made known in the gift of Jesus, let us confess, confess our sins. Holy God, Holy God we, we confess, confess that, that we are a distracted people and forgetful of your love. love. We, we make selfish, selfish choices, choices, hurt each, each other, other, and perpetuate injustices in, your world. in your world. We have, we have sinned, sinned against you and are deeply sorry and repent of our disregard of you, each other, and your creation. By the power of your Spirit, forgive, restore, and strengthen us to live in your light 
and walk in your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As children of the Holy One, God forgives you and loves you internally. By the power of God's Spirit, forgive yourself and forgive others as God in Christ has forgiven you. passing of the peace so if everyone wants to say hi to each other. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Okay, you may be seated. Let us pray together the prayer for illumination. Heavenly God, holy, holy wisdom, wisdom came, came to, to dwell, dwell with, with us in Jesus. In Jesus. Fill her world with her light and life. May she dwell within your word this day, that we may have intimate knowledge of your love for us through the one who is close to your heart, Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. The first scripture reading is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does that, them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to see you here and that we didn't get all that inches of snow and freezing rain last night. I even put my windshield thingies, wipers up. I know what they're called, windshield wipers up. And of course, the one time I do, I didn't need to. But another thing that is handy, and I'm sure some of you laid out last night, is salt. Salt is one of those things that is the most ancient of all the cooking spices and one of the most useful things that we use. Salt, also known as sodium chloride, is the only mineral that we as human beings take directly from the earth and eat. We would die without salt, but we'd also find a good bit of otherwise tasty food rather dull and lifeless were it not for salt. Those of you who cook and bake know that if in doubt, a pinch of salt will make things tastier. I see one person nodding. Apparently we don't cook. Two. Yay. On average, evidently, Americans take in 12,000 12, milligrams of salt a day, or about 250 shakes from a salt shaker. Salt is indispensable to good food, and when used thoughtfully, sharpens and defines flavors and aromas and melds flavors together in a way that transforms bland soup and dishes into something that is complex and delicious. Salt controls the ripening of cheese, it strengthens the gluten in bread, preserves meats, and just generally provides a, a certain je ne sais quoi that enhances one's experience of food. Salted caramel. Did you just drool? <laughs> Salted butter, brined turkey, french fries, pretzels. Even so, salt need to be, needs to be used well. Few things are more disapp disappointing than finishing a dish at the stove only to remember too late that you forgot to add any salt. Then again, nothing can ruin a dish quite faster or as much as adding too much salt. Jesus uses this imagery of salt. You are the salt of the earth. Jesus said to his disciples, it was a striking image then and it is a striking image now. But what does this imply for discipleship? Well, I just mentioned the good effect of salt has on the food that we eat, of course, to get that tasty effect, you have to mix the sodium chloride with food. And how foolish it would be to think that just having a box of pink Himalayan salt 
next to the stove will make a difference if you don't sprinkle any in. If you ask a cook, did you add any, did you add any salt? Then the answer better not be, no, but I have a salt well. Isn't that enough? That is a rather absurd scenario, yet it seems to be pretty much the one that Jesus has in mind. Jesus talks about salt losing its saltiness. However, in the Greek, Jesus wonders about salt become moronos, from which we derive our English word moron or fool. If salt becomes foolish, Jesus asks, then what good is it? To have salt, but to not use it. To have salt sitting next to the stove, but to never put any in the pot, is foolish. What's the sense of having it there if you're not going to add it to the food thoughtfully, with balance, to enhance the flavors? You may as well toss it out, to, out the window for all good such unused salt will do for your dinner. Salt has a purpose, a definitive purpose purpose. And if you won't use it for that purpose, then salt becomes foolish to have around. The implication for disciples, us, is that we exist for mixing in with the world. It means that for us to do our savory gospel task of making this world a better place, we need to be out there being mixed up with the people and the culture and society. Jesus is saying that if you're going to live like salt, then it's not enough to work just inside the church community and the building. It's not enough to nurture a strong interior life of spirituality, being pious. No, the result of all your piety must be pouring yourself out into the earth so as to bring out life's complex and beautiful flavors. To be useful and true salt, you need to mix into the world and bringing with you the savory gospel. But the light still needs to shine. The pathways of God's kingdom still needs to be followed. Maybe it would be easier to let your light shine if you stayed in church all the time, never left home, so to speak. But literal salt that never leaves the shaker does nothing to add zing to your french fries. And likewise, Christian disciples who never interact with non-Christian people have no chance of reaching those people with the influence of that whole new world of God, that God, of God that just is the kingdom. And even as light, what good would, light, would it be for light to be shining in the closet for no one to see? Even with a lampshade, a light that stands atop a hill is one that shines brightly and proud and illuminates and highlights what is in the corners and has not been seen. But a light gets its light from somewhere. Be it a bulb or a flame, with electrical power through cords and batteries, or with the strike of a match. It receives its energy from something outside of itself and ignites to a light that shines bright and long. Be it a filament or a wick, it just stands there and illumes. I have heard it said that if the earth were entirely flat, you could see the light of a flickering candle 30 miles away. So it really doesn't take that much light for it to be seen. I don't know when it will really feel like the sun is shining again here in Michigan or upon us here in this pandemic, ridden, pandemic ridden world where the next variant continues to diminish our hope for a light at the end of the tunnel. But I do know this, the light still shines even when it seems as though it doesn't. And when it seems that it doesn't, well, then I expect it starts with you and me. And maybe we simply start by looking for light. Oh, sorry, that's the first time I ever did that. Light is a gift, light that can be received, 
light that can be passed along. If salt must be mixed in with the food to bring flavor and zest, light is lit from a source outside of itself, illuminates and draws in simply by existing. Salt and light are also metaphors for vigilance. They are rarely, if ever, not present. And if they are absent, something is drastically wrong. Both are necessary for health, for life, for sustenance, for survival. As the church with the sign that stands on the corner of Tory and Mac, across from City Hall, next to the jewelers, down the, down the road from Mac Ave Grill, and Original House of Pancakes, around the corner from St. John's Hospital, how are we being salt in this world where we are? How are we being light in this world, in this place? Jesus did not say to become salt, but that by virtue of being a disciple of Christ, we are salt. Each of us just is salt. Gross Point Woods Presbyterian Church is salt and light of the world. We are salt by being a part of the community that brings in and goes out into Gross Point Woods, Detroit, Wayne County, Michigan, the world. And we sprinkle our salty zest wherever we go, and we are light simply by existing and turning on our sign for the world to see us through our stained glass windows, shining through the church. We have various ministries that are housed here, Caught Up, Sister Judy, Sunny Days. And yes, while they are our tenants and they use our facilities to be salt and light themselves, how can we be salt and light to those who are nearest to us? And how can we be salt and light to the various other services, businesses, and activities that are carried out here? Recently, we learned um, as a session that Caught Up has had a hard financial couple years, much like the rest of the world. And therefore, they have had a hard time feeding the young men who partake in this ministry and program. Upon learning of this challenging situation, our church and its members decided to be salt and light and mobilize to see how we could best help them and support them. Members stepped in and provided a hot meal, and uh, the, uh, the deacons are considering ways to make sure that they don't go hungry when they're here. How can we provide food? How long will we provide food? What kind of food? What do they need? And maybe this will give us a way to begin a conversation about not just what we can do to start a briny, salty relationship, salty in a good way. And maybe we can start to shine a light on this and then, in, even in time when too much of the world seems to care for so little for such as these. And maybe that shining light will serve as both a beacon and a promise to both those who are vulnerable and those who have extra to share. And so now I wonder, where have you sprinkled your salt lately? How has your salt made the world around you savory and balanced? How will you ensure your salt does not lose flavor and continue to spread into each of our collective and respective communities? Where have you seen light lately? Have you been light? And how has that light been reflected back to you? And how are you going to be light tomorrow? Finally, what does it mean for us to receive the light that we are called to share? How will we be strengthened and sustained as we listen and respond to Jesus' call to and for us now to be the light of the world? Amen. Let us rise and sing hymn 314, Longing for the Light We Wait in Darkness.
be seated. This has been here ever since I've ever been here. And this is the first time I'm using it. It makes it so much easier to see. What good is light if we don't use it? What good is light if it is not lit? Uh, As we pray the prayers of the people, Please join in the refrain, shine in our lives whenever you hear light of the world. God's light breaks through the darkness to fill our lives with grace and truth. This is the good news of Christmas, that Christ came to show us how to walk the path of wisdom enlightened by your love. Let us pray for the church and the world saying, light of the world, shine in our lives. Eternal source, we pray for Christ's church throughout the world. May we, like John the Baptist, point others to the light in all we do in service of your love. Light of the world, shine in our lives. Divine wisdom, we pray for all leaders of the world. May your justice guide us to govern with truth and equity for all. 
Prince of Peace, we pray for all those who live and serve in places of violence and unrest. May you keep them from harm's way. Precious resources with which you have entrusted us. Light of the world, shine in our lives. Joy of every human heart, we pray for all who suffer sickness or sorrow and grief. May your healing love find a dwelling place in our lives this day. Light of the world, shine in our lives. Holy Comforter, we pray for those in need of food and shelter. May, we, may your abiding presence shelter them, from, shelter them with mercy as we build communities of care. Eternal dayspring from on high, we pray for those who are dying and those who have died. May they find in you a resting place by springs of living water. O oh, great mystery, eternity entered time in your word, and our lives are embraced with the compassion of your word. Open our hearts to the wonder of your love, that wisdom may find a home in us and forever speak your praise. And we pray using the words that you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and glory forever. Amen.
God, may the gifts that we have offered be pleasing to you and be used to be salt and light in this world. Amen. And friends, please join me in the blessing. Go forth in the grace of Christ. Go forth in the light of Christ. Go forth in the love of Christ. Amen.